Hello and welcome to another video. And yes, we are back in the workshop. Finally, another Porsche episode. I can't wait. I'm so excited. I've squeezed in a day. I don't really have time. I've been so busy with filming the repair shop, doing voiceover for the new show that's coming out in January. It's just been manic, absolutely manic. Um, and obviously, whilst all this is going on, I am working on finishing Ranellers. That's another new one. I can't share too much about that Ranneller at the moment but all will be revealed, hopefully before Christmas. That is an exciting one. But anyway, today's episode, we are back on the 356. It's looking less and less like a 356 every time we work on it, and I think that's gonna continue. My friend, Henry, has come to give us a hand today. I am so sick of whenever I go near this car, I just start sneezing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's gone. Because when we took the headliner down, the, like a, a squirrel's nest or something, or rat, I don't know what it was, fell down and the whole inside of the car, I mean, it'd been in a barn for who knows how many years. It had a fair bit of wildlife living in it and I've not even had the time to actually hoover it all out and clean it all out. So first things first, we're gonna give the whole thing a good hoover, dust out, blow out, try and remove as much dust as I possibly can. Then we can get into the real work. Brilliant, they're so much better. I can actually see what I'm working with now. I found the best thing I found was the accelerator pedal. I didn't actually know that was in there. I don't have the rest of the pedal assembly. That's something else I need, I need to try and find. Um, but at least I've got the accelerator pedal, that's something. The floor that it actually attaches to is not even there. So how that pedal was still in there, who knows? There's a lot more bits in here now that I can actually unbolt. Heater control, the seat runner, a uh, few other bits and bobs that I can actually get to now, which is great. So I'll get those unbolted. And there's also a couple of more riveted on repairs. So I will drill out those rivets, remove those repairs, and see what's hiding underneath. It's always a good laugh, isn't it? <laughs> Whenever you're trying to undo rusty nuts and bolts like this, a little bit of heat expands the nut, um, which breaks that rusty bond between the nut and the bolt. A little bit of wire brush to clean up the threads so the nut, once it's loose, can actually work its way up. And a little bit of lubricant on the, along the way. This stuff is absolutely brilliant. Not a one snapped bolt. And that's the seat runner removed. Let's have a look what's behind this plate. Yeah, I've got a feeling it's not going to be great news. Taking that off has revealed more of these riveted on bits of, bits of aluminium. I'm gonna work my way along. They literally go all the way down. What a nightmare. There's another one. That's bad. Look at this, this is not good. <laughs> this is the seal here. There's actually supposed to be a piece of metal. I think the remains of it is here. This piece is supposed to be going all the way down. 
all of this was completely covered with the aluminium rivets. You can see it's completely rotten all the way along where the floor pan, floor pan is supposed to be joined onto that seal. It's loose all the way along. I mean, there's barely anything holding that side of the floor pan in. It wouldn't take much to actually just chop that whole piece out. It's doing absolutely nothing in there now. Maybe it's best just get it out of the way. Some more clues to the original color. Look at that. This is a tar board which was fitted at the factory. And it's not rusty. For the first time, <laughs> I've taken a panel off and there's no rust. Look at that, brilliant. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna cut this floor panel out. I just think it's not doing anything at all structural. It's not helping anyone. It's in the way. There's so many spot welds. I've run the wire wheel around the edge to try and reveal where they are. Um, I'm not even gonna try and drill them out. All I'm gonna do is cut inside of them to leave the tunnel and the back of the car in place to cut the actual floor pan. And that will leave me the little sort of 10 mil strip that is spot welded on. And I can deal with that afterwards once I can actually get in there a bit easier. So I'm gonna run the, run the grinder with a cutting, very thin cutting disc all around the edge of whatever's left holding this panel in place. Hopefully it should just pop straight out. I'm going to be replacing the floor panel anyway. So I may as well just cut that inboard of everything I'm trying to keep, get the bulk of it out of the way, and then I can deal with the remains afterwards. Wish me luck, this is a big one. We're cutting the floor out of the Porsche. a huge piece removed look at that so much better it's so nice to be working back on the Porsche again it's I, I can't tell you I'm so excited I cannot wait I'm just itching to get stuck into this thing literally itching I know we've got quite a lot of new subscribers uh, since we put the Porsche videos out and a lot of you keep nagging at me in the in the comments saying when are you gonna work on the Porsche I've got a busy busy schedule four or five days a week at, during the week I'm down at the repair shop filming the repair shop I've been filming voiceover when I'm not there for the new show coming out in January. And I've got a Ranala that I'm working on that's almost finished that needs to be delivered before Christmas. So I've been doing that in my odd days here in, in gaps in time in between. Trust me, I am as desperate and as keen as you are to work on this Porsche as you are to see it. I'm, good, I'm trying my best. I really am trying. Any spare minute that I get, I am gonna dedicate to this. But the best news is that all of January, I've already booked John. John is coming up one day a week for the whole of January. We're not filming the repair shop. So I've got all of the time in the world. Well, not all the time in the world. I'm gonna do my very best so that every video in January is a Porsche video. John's gonna be up here. I've got some good time to dedicate to it. We're gonna cut all of this rot out and make some really good progress. Anyway, let's get back to it. <laughs>
Brilliant, that's it. Well, that was a lot easier than the first one. Mostly because it's a lot more rusty on that side, but both floor pans are out. Brilliant, look at that. How cool is that? Underneath all that tar board, there's not only no rust, but all little signs of the original blue color. I'm starting to get a little bit sniffy again. My eyes are running. I think it's having my head in there. It's that hairy kind of this stuff, whatever this is. Look at it. This is deteriorated old insulation. I think it's just getting in my, in my eyes as soon as I can get all of that insulation out and removed it will be a much happier place in there because at the moment it is unbearable it's so horrible in there I'm so glad that all that tar is removed um, it's, it's brilliant there's no damage underneath no rust it's looking actually for the first time the back half is looking pretty good I've bought myself a new present I've got something in the van if I can get it out I'll show you what that is but you'll have to bear with me because it's big That was as precarious as it looked. <laughs> Basically, I put a cheeky bid on an eBay auction for this bench. It was on there. I was the first one to bid and it was cheap. And I thought, oh, I'll just put a bid in. It will go for a lot more than that. I've been looking at these workbenches for a long time and they always go for a ton of money. Um, even scrap value, this, this thing is so heavy. Um, I put a little bid in, forgot about it. 10 days went past and I just got a notification saying, you've won. I was like, oh no. Now what? <laughs> so I back, I've got this 10 foot by 5 foot wooden workbench up the front end of the workshop and when I quit Rankins, I went out on my own, got my own workshop in Hackneywick and uh, just took over a derelict workshop. It was about seven, 800 square foot-ish in Hackneywick. The roof was leaking, it was a disaster. Um, and that workbench was the very first thing that I ever made in that, in that workshop. Um, and it's it lasted me ever since. And so I've got this 10 foot by 5 foot workbench taking up so much room in the workshop and I literally use about two foot on the end of it. I thought what I could do with is a slightly smaller steel workbench that I can put an anvil on, hammer on, use metal shaping and it would, it would just be more helpful for setting up bits on the Ranella. I've got a nice heavy sturdy table. I went to pick it up one evening and literally when he put it in the van with a, with a forklift the whole back of the van just went like that and <laughs> sunk down. I was just like, oh no, that is so heavy. How on earth am I gonna get it out? But anyway, it's out. When you work on your own in situations like this, I spent so many years working on my own, you have to be quite creative and, and you do get used to moving heavy things in a certain way on your own. I've got a pump truck and a, a pallet truck and a jack and bits of wood. You kind of, anyone out there that's got a workshop that works on their own, you know what I mean. And it's in the middle. Look at that. I've ordered some casters that are rated for 400 kilos each, I think. Um, so there'll be plenty. Um, they're turning up Monday and I'll, I'll basically jack it up and bolt the wheels on underneath and lower it back down. That will bring it up 150 mil. Um, so it'll be a good, nice high working height so I can stand at it. It's brilliant, I love it. It doesn't even need too much work. It's got a replacement top on it that's bolted in place, a big 10 mil thick piece of steel. I'll probably leave that on because I feel like there's a reason why 
somebody's done that. I imagine the original tabletop is completely destroyed. I can't wait to put it to use. I'm going to get the wheels on the bottom so I can actually move it around. And I've got a feeling that now this is down here, I may end up leaving that big 10 foot by 5 foot workbench up the top, the wooden one. Even though this is supposed to be replacing it, I quite like it down this end. Give this space. I've got my mask on, my goggles. I'm going back in. Wish me luck. This is absolutely horrible. Honestly, it's really grim. I'm so itchy, it's, so, it's unbearable. I can't do this for too much longer. I'll try and get this one more side off and that is it, I'm calling it because this is horrible. I find things like this really interesting. So you can see, well, hopefully you can see, these areas where the blue paint is, that's the original paint. You can see the bare metal area then there's the paint, but the paint is not straight on top of the metal. The paint is over a textured underseal. They've painted it with this black underseal and then painted that blue. So this blue is almost like an overspray from painting the body, but it wasn't over the bare metal. This whole back sort of parcel shelf area and around the sides was all painted in this textured underseal. Then a blue, blue sort of overspray over the top. Then on top of that, was the tarboards and the insulation. Maybe it's just me, but I find things like that absolutely fascinating. And I've only noticed that by doing this slowly by hand. Um, I, I know there are other ways of doing this. I've seen lots of people using dry ice um, to use thermal shock to freeze the tarboards and then just chip it all off and it will all fracture off. Uh, there's various different ways I could have got, gone about doing this, but. I know it's been fairly traumatic with me itching and sneezing in my eyes and the, the dust and whatever else is in here, but it's been quite therapeutic and I've really enjoyed it. And it's, this is the part that I really enjoy of a restoration where you're uncovering the history and you're digging in and you're, you're peeling away the layers of, you know, the insulation, the tar boards, then the paint and the overspray right back to the bare metal. And this has given me such a good understanding of how this car was made in 1956 when it was brand new in the factory and I'm going to go through all of those steps now back to get this exactly like it used to be. I'll get this stripped right back to the bare metal, make any repairs that I need to, then I know that all of this will be keyed up, sanded down, textured under seal and then just overspray of blue when I spray the body. I'll finish this video here because it's about seven or eight o'clock at night now and I'm knackered and ready for dinner. I think it's fish and chips tonight and I can't wait. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Leave me any comments below if you've got some feedback. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Some... <coughs> oh man.